we're going to finish this section um, talking about the anti-tubercular agents, the anti-fungal agents, as well as the anti um, viral agents. Uh, we're going to do a quick review uh, of these medications because these are not as common other than the antifungal um, in practice unless you're specializing. So we're going to start with the antitubercular agents. So these agents include um, the antitubercular agents such as isoniazide, arabic rafampine, um, the aminoglucosides, and the fluoroquinolones. So let's talk about uh, treatment principles. TB, as you all know, is caused by mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a thick wall bacterium. The primary route of infection is inhalation of infectious particles. The bacilli are also spread to the lymphatic system and may lodge in the bone or other organ systems such as the bone, bladder, or central nervous system. A cell-mediated immune response results in tubercular formation. The focus here is on the drugs used to treat patients with latent tuberculosis infection because this is the important component in, of primary care. TB as we all know, is a highly contagious reportable disease who treat, whose treatment should be initiated by an infectious disease specialist. The primary care provider should be um, attentive to the possibility that patients have TB, especially if they come from a high-risk population, such as those with HIV or AIDS. These patients should be referred for initial workup and treatment, and then the primary care uh, provider can follow the patient throughout the course of therapy. The latent TB infection occurs when a person is infected with TB bacteria but does not yet have symptoms. So they cannot transmit the bacteria to others. However, if the bacteria becomes active, the person will develop disease and can spread it to others. Certain people, including those with weakened immune systems, are more likely to progress from latent to active TB. Many of the high-risk patients with latent TB feel fine and do not begin the nine-month course of treatment, and many of those do, who do begin the therapy do not see it through to the end. However, a new regimen streamlines the treatment to 12 once-per-week doses of isoniazide along with rifampentine. So what are the evidence-based um, recommendations? To prevent TB in high-risk patients with HIV, isoniazide is given for 6 to 12 months. 12 months was an effective, was as effective, 6 months was as effective as 12 months. Isoniazide increases the risk of hepatotoxicity compared um, to that of a placebo. So for this reason, we need to monitor uh, patients with renal fa uh, liver failure. The first line anti-TB agents that form the core of FDA-approved drug treatment includes the isoniazide, rifampine, ethobutol, and pyrazimide. For patients with newly diagnosed pulmonary tuberculosis, a six-month course of chemotherapy with at least two drugs is recommended. Several regimens are available. Each has an initial phase, which includes three to four drugs given for six to eight weeks, followed by the continuation phase with two drugs given for 18 weeks. So what we need to um, concentrate is on is the cardinal points of treatment. This is treatment of latent infection. What we know is that isoniazide is the treatment of choice and is given for three months along with um, the RIF. In patients who are HIV infected, treatment usually or generally begins as soon as TB is suspected and is modified according to the status of the HIV disease. The patients who are not HIV infected, treatment usually is reserved until a, defi a definitive diagnosis has been made. For treatment of an active infection, uh, first thing is to report all cases to local and state health authorities. Authorities, As we know, this is a reportable and very contagious disease. We need to test and treat close contacts. 
we need to monitor closely to ensure that the patient is compliant and is responding to the prescribed drugs. DOT or direct observed therapy has proven to be the highest success rate in treatment of patients with TB. We must administer drugs, multiple drugs to which organisms are susceptible and not resistant and add at least two new anti-tubercular agents when treatment failure is suspected. So what are our treatment options? Our first line drugs are the isoniazide, the RIF, the second um, line drugs include cyclosurine, uh, streptomycin, levofloxin, my, uh, moxifloxin, and these are, can be found in um, your text. What we need to do is dispense one month's supply of the medication at, the time, at a time. This way we can monitor the patient monthly, make sure that they're compliant with their regimen and are not having any uh, adverse reactions. If the patient has been exposed to DB that is known to be resistant, we need to consult the local health department for treatment recommendations. Again, these patients are going to be um, seen by infectious disease first and we'll be monitoring them um, through their, throughout the course of therapy. So how do we monitor these patients? Um, so for the isoniazide uh, prophylaxis, we need to see the patients on a monthly basis. When we see these patients, we need to ask them about the signs and symptoms of liver damage or other toxic effects such as anorexia, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, weakness, new and persistent paresthesias of the hand and feet, persistent dark urine, icterus, rash, or elevated temperature. We need to obtain routine LFTs monthly for patients at high risk for developing INH hepatitis. These include patients older than 35, daily drinkers, and those who are on other medications toxic to the liver, as well as those with a history of liver disease. Discontinuation of INH immediately um, if the patient develops signs or symptoms of toxicity. Those patients with active TB, we need to obtain a chest ray, x-ray at baseline and at six months. A sputum sample is collected, uh, smear and culture, and these are collected at baseline as well as monthly until negative. Hepatic enzymes are measured as well as bilirubin, serum creatinine, CBC, platelets, and serum uric acid baseline and monthly for those patients that are taking the INH, RIF, and EMB therapy for active TB. Routine measurements of platelet count and hepatic and renal function um, are not necessary during treatment unless the patient has a baseline abnormality or is in an increased risk of hepatotoxicity, such as patients with hepatitis B or C virus infection or alcohol abuse. At each monthly visit, patients who are taking the EMB should be questioned regarding possible visual disturbances such as blurred vision, monthly testing of visual acuity and color discrimination, as well as um, those patients who are taking doses that are on a milligram per kilogram basis greater than those recommended, and for those patients receiving the drug for longer than two months. Patients who are taking specific drugs should be monitored monitored for specific problems. For those patients who are taking INH, periodic ophthalmic exams are needed. For those take patients um, taking pyrazamide, um, you need to collect blood glucose levels, um, particularly um, in difficult to control glucose levels of patients with diabetes mellitus. With ethambutol, you need to monitor close um, color vision for red-green at baseline and at two and three months. With streptomycin, which is a second-line drug, you need to obtain an audiogram before beginning the drug and at two to three months and monitoring drug serum concentration of the streptomycin. With cyclosurine, you need to monitor blood levels weekly in patients with reduced renal functions. So what are the patient uh, variables? For geriatric patients, um, 
the, these patients are at increased risk for toxic effects, especially on the liver and the central nervous system. For pediatric patients, treatment of infants and children and adolescents with TB is similar to that provided for adults, with one exception. Ethambutol is not recommended unless routine eye exams can be performed. INH, RIF uh, are commonly used with children. Ethambutol is not recommended for use of children younger than 13 years unless benefit outweighs risk. Streptomycin is not recommended for use in children at all. Safety and dosage of cyclosurine and ethanamide have, been not, have not been established um, in the pediatric population. What about the pregnant um, woman or the um, breastfeeding woman? Um, most, um, the treatment for TB with a three drug regimen is recommended. They are considered category C, um, including INH, RIF, and ethambutol. These are preferred. The risk of TB poses a greater risk to the fetus than do the side effects of the drug therapy. Despite the fact that they do cross the placenta, these drugs do not appear to exert um, effects on the fetus. The aminoglucosides are category D, and um, ethamide has been uh, showed pterogenic uh, effects in animals. INH, RIF, um, ethambutol, cyclosterine all appear in the breast milk. Breastfeeding should not be discouraged in women receiving INH, RIF, and ethambutol. Well, what about patient education? Again, these patients are going to initially be seen by infectious disease, but you need to monitor them throughout their um, treatment. Patients should be given extensive education about the nature of the disease and the need to follow instructions exactly. The most important points are compliance. They need to take the medication exactly as directed. They need to keep all their appointments for follow-up. Adequate testing is required to determine whether the TB has been halted. They must maintain respiratory isolation while they're contagious. They must avoid intimate contact with others. Um, they should cough into a tissue and dispose of the tissue in a closed plastic bag. They should not share utensils or drinking glasses. They should use good hand washing techniques and adhere, adhere to a proper hydration, diet, rest, and exercise program. So now we're going to move on to um, the antifungal medications. So the antifungals uh, include the zoles, um, the benzyl benzylene derivatives, polyenes, um, and other drugs. You can find a list of these in the text. So what are these used for? Indications, uh, oncomycosis or um, fungal infections of the um, nails, tinea infections, candida infections, histoplasmosis, plastomycosis, pneumocytosis, cryptococcus, and aspergillosis. These are all um, the fungal infections that respond to the antifungal medications. So what is the mechanisms of actions? The azoles are primarily uh, fung fungal static rather than fungal cytal. They are classified as the uh, zoles, um, depending on whether the zole has two or three nitrogens in the five-membered zole ring. The primary antifungal uh, effect of the azoles is inhibition um, of synthesis of the ergosterol Synthesis. This is uh, accomplished by distributed, disrupting the C14A demethylase, um, which is an enzyme dependent on the cytochrome P450. Again, you're not responsible for this, but uh, you should have an idea of how um, these medications um, accomplish the effect. 
the fungal cell membranes become more permeable and leak cell contents and cell growth and replication are thereby inhibited. Uh, for the terbinafine, this blocks the biosynthesis of ergosterol, and which is an essential component of fungal um, cell membranes. The gizofulvin um, is derived from a species of penicillium, um, and it is deposited in the keratin of diseased tissues, making it resistant to fungal infections. The diseased tissue is gradually exfoliated and is replaced by non-infected tissues. So what are our treatment principles? The Infectious Disease Society of America has put forth guidelines for the treatment of patients with aspergillus, blastomycosis, coccidiomycosis, or cryptococcal diseases, um, candidiasis, histoplasmosis, and sporotrichosis. Evidence-based recommendations um, for oncomycosis, um, they find that oral trebinthine is more effective than the oral itraconazole. It's likely to be beneficial using a fluconazole topical um, cases as well. The mild cases invo involving the very distal neoplate can um, be effective. The cardinal uh, points of treatment is that the topical fungi are often resistant to oral treatment. In order to be effective, treatment may consist of the xyols. Culture and uh, microscopy should be performed whenever possible to confirm the diagnosis, and a wide variety of tests are available, including uh, KOH, in which is interpreted by a dermatologist and laboratory technician, um, KOH with dimethyl sulfoxide, DMSO, when combined with chlorazole, black E, um, can diagnose a fungal infection. And this is also interpreted by a dermatologist. A culture with a dermified test medium or a mycobiotic and inhibitory mold agar can be diagnostic. Histopathology pathologic analysis with the use of uh, periodic acid, sniff stain is diagnostic. And if the infection is unresponsive to empirical therapy, cultures must be obtained to confirm the diagnosis and rule out um, resistant organisms. Option, optimal duration of treatment um, with antifungal therapy is not clear. It depends on the infection. It may be continued for weeks, months, or frequently the case with patients with AIDS um, are on these medications indefinitely. Glucanazole has been approved for a single dose treatment of um, vulval vaginal candidiasis, although the CDC continues to recommend that topical therapy with um, imazole derivative antifungal is preferred because of resistant, resistance. Um, for geriatric patients, elderly patients tend to be susceptible to hepatotoxicity and are likely to be on other medications that interact with these drugs. Lower doses of these products are required for patients with a reduced real function. Trichanazole oral solution is formulated with a hydroxypropyl beta cyclodextrin, which is eliminated by the kidneys and should not be used in patients with a creatinine clearance lower than 30. Pediatric patients, um, the ketoconazole, grisofolvin, um, safety of use has not, of children younger than two has not been established. Glucanazole has been used in immunocompressed children six months or older. Itraconazole has been used in children six months to 12 years of age with serious systemic infections. However, the safety and the efficacy has not been established for this medication. Terbinafine, um, again, safety and efficiency, eff efficacy has not been established for children. And Gristofalvin, um, for children greater than two years, it may produce an estrogen-like effect. 
um, including enlarged breast, hyperpigmentation of the areoli, nipples, and external genitalia. These are all. This is all information that you need to um, pass on to the parents so that um, they they will expect that these may be side effects from the medications. For patients um, who are pregnant or lactating, um, some of these are uh, terbinafine is category B. Um, it's not recommended and is present in breast milk. Most of the other medications are um, category C um, and should not, should use, um, you should, the patient should be using contraception during the first, during and for two months after therapy because of the uh, toxic effects to the fetus. Women using oral contraception should be advised to use supplemental contraception such as a barrier method during the during and for two months after antifungal therapy and these medications are excreted in the breast milk. They should not be prescribed to nursing women. Flucanazole has been considered a category D um, because pregnant women who have been who have taken ongoing high doses may be at increased risk for having a baby with birth defects. Risk is labeled as C for a single low dose, 150 milligram um, dose to treat vaginal yeast infections, um, but long-term high doses increases the risk of birth defects. Um, for those taking a single dose of 150 milligrams for a vaginal yeast infection, little risk um, for problems has been documented. Patient education um, for all of the, of the antifungals, they should be taken as prescribed. Inadequate treatment periods may result in poor response or early recurrence of the symptoms. These are fungal infections um, require long-term um, treatment and if the patient does not take as prescribed, um, they'll end up having reinfection um, and having to repeat treatment. Um, patient needs to report any signs or symptoms of hepatitis, such as fatigue, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, jaundice, dark urine, or pale stools. Um, ketoconazole may cause a photosensitivity, and during treatment, um, alcohol consumption and medications that contain acetaminophen should be um, avoided. The azoles um, should not take ketoconazole um, within two hours of taking an antacid. Um, the fluconazole should be taken without regard to, for food or gastric acidity restrictions. And women of childbearing age should use contraceptives or abstain from sexual intercourse while on azole therapy. Grisoflavin, um, bioavailability, bio, bioavailability improves when given with food. Headaches, if they occur, usually disappear with continued tr treatment or when taken with food. The patient is instructed to notify the provider if, the skin, if a skin rash or sore throat appears, and these, may, these medications may potentiate effects of alcohol. So again, um, the patient should avoid alcohol consumption. And finally, we're going to do a quick um, re uh, review of antiretroviral um, medications. Again, um, these patients will be followed by infectious disease. However, you may be monitoring. So currently, there are five classes of antiretroviral medications, um, and these are used to treat HIV infections. The nucleoside analog reverse transcriptase inhibitors, NRTIs, the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, NNRTIs, the protease inhibitors, the PIs, entry fusion inhibitors, and integrase strand transfer inhibitors, INSTIs.
So the NRTIs in general are used in combination with non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, protein inhibitors, and integrase strand transfer inhibitors for the treatment of patients with HIV infection. Uh, many of these reduce neonatal transmission of HIV and usually combined um, as a part of the HIV regimen in, in patients that are pregnant. Treatment in patients with HIV and chronic hepatitis um, is also common, although the FDA is, has not approved. Many of these medications, um, off many are used off-label in place of other anti um, HIV medications, um, and all of the NRTIs can be used in a pre- and post-exposure prophylaxis. Um, some of these medications can be used as second-line therapy for treatment of HIV in the virus um, if the virus uses only the CCR5 co-receptor to enter the CD4 cell. This is determined by an HIV trophil test. Again, most of these patients are going to be seeing infectious disease. Um, they'll be placed on these medications, and you may be um, monitoring um, blood work, CD4 counts, et cetera. However, again, most of these are patients are followed by infectious disease. So this um, is a nice um, chart that shows the mechanism of action of infection and cellular outcomes of HIV. Um, HIV infection begins when a virus or virus particle, when the patient becomes um, in contact with this virus, the virus particle um, binds to the outside of a susceptible cell and fuses with it. It then injects the core proteins in two strands of viral RNA. Uncoding occurs during which the core proteins are removed and viral RNA is released into the cytoplasm of the infected cell. The double-stranded DNA, the provirus, migrates to the nucleus, uncoats itself, and is integrated into the cell's own DNA. The provirus then can do a couple of things. It can either remain latent or activate cellular mechanisms to copy its genes into RNA, some of which is, which is translated into viral proteins or ri ribosomes. The proteins and additional RNA then are assembled into a new virus that bud from the cell. This process can take place slowly while sparing the host cell or rapidly, um, or so rapidly that the cell is lysed or ruptured. Again, you're not responsible for knowing this whole process. It's just um, nice to be exposed to this. So antiretroviral agents act to stop the production of new retroviruses by interfering with the ability of the retrovirus to replicate NRTIs. Um, to replicate the NRTIs disrupt replication of the virus at the point at which the virus is replicating its RNA to make the DNA during reverse transcriptase. The enzyme copies that copies the viral RNA into DNA is um, disrupted. The NNRTIs resemble false nucleotides um, by binding with a mechanism to inhibit the reverse transcriptase enzyme activity. The PIs prevent the proteus enzyme from cleaving essential proteins into the HIV virus. Fusion inhibitors prevent HIV from entering target cells, and integrase strand transfer inhibitors interfere with the process of DNA strand transfer from the viral genome to the host genome. Again, not responsible um, on any of the quizzes. However, um, you should be exposed to this information. So certain agents can block the binding of HIV to CD4 receptors on the surface of the T helper cells. 
other agents might keep viral RNA and reverse transcriptase from leaving their protein coat. Drugs such as AZT and other dinucleosides prevent the reverse transcription of viral RNA into viral DNA. Later, antisense oligonucleotides could block the transmission of mRNA into viral proteins. Certain compounds could interfere with viral assembly by modifying such processes. And finally, antiviral agents such as the interferon can keep the virus from assembling itself and budding out of the cell. So what um, this is showing you is that HIV is subject to attack by drugs at several stages of the disease process. So initia initiation of therapy in symptomatic patients, um, as well as asymptomatic um, patients. Evidence-based recommendations um, highlight four clinical issues. When to start the antiretroviral therapy, which drugs to use in initial treatment, when and how to change your treatment regimen, and the use of antiviral therapy in special circumstances, including comorbid conditions and pregnancy. It's important to monitor the DHHS guideline updates at the AIDS info site, and this can be found at um, online um, because these therapies, as um, many other drug therapies, um, change frequently. So what are the effects of different antiviral drug treatment regimens on HIV infections? Um, they found to be beneficial. Um, the U.S. Preventative Task Force now recommends routine HIV testing for all Americans age 15 to 65 because of the major health benefits of early HIV treatment. Having at least two, preferably three, agent, active agents in the regimen increases efficacy. And boosted protease inhibitor-based and NNRTI-based regimens are effective in suppressing the virus and strengthening the immune system in both treatment-naive patients as well as treatment-experienced patients. An integrase strand inhibitor-based regimen is comparable, comparable to the um, NNRTI-based regimen in treatment of the naive patients. The starting um, of the antiviral earlier in the disease has shown benefit in decreasing transmission and long-term non-AIDS related disease. If any of you can remember when um, HIV first came out, people were um, expected not to survive. Now with all these um, anti um, medications, um, we're finding that the antiretrovirals are um, if started earlier, benefit um, long-term non-age-related diseases, non-age-related diseases. The unknown effectiveness of this drug, um, early versus delayed treatment, um, it's unknown whether um, this is effective. Um, the long-term side effects of the newer agents um, and what we must do is monitor new findings, which are updated at the DHHS guideline updates at the AIDS Info website. website. Again, like many of the other medications, um, these drugs are continually, continually being um, added and changed and um, finding new and better ways of um, treating this disease. So how um, do we monitor these patients? Baseline laboratory studies and screening tests are performed on the initial evaluation. Again, most are seen by infectious disease. If the patients are symptomatic or have comorbidities, then um, more testing may be indicated. And this is decided by infectious disease. After antiretroviral therapy is initiated, um, the patient is monitored for responses through laboratory laboratory tests, um, including the CD4 count, um, to see whether they're responding appropriately. 
we uh, again patient variables, special populations, patients with renal and hepatic insufficiency can um, pose a therapeutic challenge to the practitioners caring for these patients. Renally impaired patients require dose modifications because of the decreased drug clearance of most of these antiviral medications. Patients with severely impaired liver function may be at greatest, greatest risk for toxicity and need to be monitored closely. Patients with cardiovascular disease also need to be monitored closely for antiviral effects on lipids. Patients who are co-infected with hepatitis B should have a regimen that includes tenofovir um, and emtriptyline. Pediatric patients, as of August in 2011, 18 antiviral retroviral agents were approved for use in HIV-infected pediatric patients. Um, dosing depends on age and weight with most pediatric antiretrovirals. Again, infectious disease needs uh, to be involved in these patients. Patients who are pregnant and lactating, um, patients need to be um, have services for um, family planning and counseling to optimize the medications um, and health prior to becoming pregnant. Before any positive, HIV positive pregnant woman is treated with the antiviral, the practitioner needs to enroll the patient in an antiretroviral pregnancy registry. Um, and these, again, you can find, um, get this information from um, infectious disease um, or go online checking um, the website at www.agregistry.com. Um, all HIV positive women should be warned of the high risk HIV transmission uh, via the breast milk and feeding infants. Um, and the CDC advises all HIV women, women not to breastfeed. Many of the drugs, there are some of the antiviral, uh, retroviral medications are category B. Um, many are category C and um, some are category D. You should look these up. And um, again, this is something that needs to be um, treated by a specialist and um, you're involved in monitoring. For the geriatric patients, except um, Except for geriatric patients, the life expectancy of HIV-infected persons who are receiving HAART now has been extended, mostly because of the immune reconstitution that results from potent antiretroviral therapy. Unlimited um, data is available um, on antiretroviral therapy in the elderly. Um, However, um, again, it's, it's difficult because of their um, decreased renal function. Um, when selecting an antiretroviral, practitioners should be cautious of dosing um, for the elderly patient because of the greatest risk for decreased hepatic renal or cardiac function and because of the likelihood of uh, comorbidities um, or other medication therapy. As the increasing number of HIV-infected individuals become older than 50, additional studies um, need to be done to explore the tolerance um, as well as the pharmacokinetics, drug-to-drug interactions, uh, interactions as well as toxicities. Each of the drugs used to treat HIV infection may demonstrate adverse effects uh, with sustained therapy and um, already reports have described increased coronary artery disease in individuals who have been taking the protease inhibitors. For patient education, again, adherence is an essential aspect of the antiretroviral therapy in that even a few missed doses may result in emergence of resistant patterns. Um, given the limited number of available agents and associated resistant pat patterns, patients must be made to understand uh, the certainty of this phenomenon with missed doses. Patients should be instructed to take their medications as prescribed. Some strategies, um, such as providing a written schedule, pill boxes, alarm clocks, pages, and other mechanical devices help to aid in adherence. 
Underdosing partial adherence and non-adherence um, may result in development of resistant strains of HIV that will not be susceptible for, to treatment. Taking less than the prescribed dose can be more harmful than not taking the drug at all, as we have seen um, in other drugs with building of resistance. Patients um, should be informed that the antiretrovirals do not cure HIV infection and that the use of these medications does not preclude the ongoing need to prevent transmission through safe sex practices and universal precautions. Patients should be instructed to, um, about drinking bottled water, ensuring good nutrition, and seeking therapy promptly for signs of infection or systemic diseases. Uh, again, some of these medications may reduce the effectiveness of oral contraceptives and require a secondary method to prevent pregnancy. This must be explored with all women of childbearing age who are taking these products. Um, so let's take a look at the antivirals, um, the anti-herpes, anti-influenza, and anti-protozoals. Um, the anti-herpetic drugs such as acyclovir, femclovir, um, are closely related. Um, they're used in the treatment of initial and recurrent um, mucosal and cutaneous herpes simplex types 1 and 2, and for the treatment of acute herpes simplex virus infection. Um, recurrent herpes infections are more than six outbreaks per year. Acyclovir has the greatest antiviral activity um, in vitro against the herpes simplex virus type 1, followed by the decreasing order of potency of HSV type 2. Varicella, varicella zoster virus, Epstein-Barr virus, and cytomegalovirus. Pencyclovir is structurally similar, but used only topically. When we look at the anti-influenza, we think of um, amantadine, romantadine, zimamir, um, and these are used in the prevention and treatment of influenza virus, um, although the effectiveness um, has been called into question. Um, amantadine is, is also used in Parkinson's disease. Amantadine and romantadine are similar as they um, similar as are oscomirivir and xanamirivir. Um, for the antiprotozole medications, uh, metronidazole has several uses in addition to the treatment of protozoa. Um, again, it's treated for bacterial and ambient infections. Chloroquine is used for malaria. Um, however, many of the strains of malaria are now resistant. So what are the indications? Acyclovir, famcyclovir, valacyclovir, and pencyclovir um, are used for treatment of herpes simplex types 1 and 2, mostly for the treatment of acute infection and chronic su suppression. Varicella zoster virus, chickenpox and shingles, Epstein-Barr virus, mononucleosis, and neonatal herpes simplex with CNS involvement. The amantadine and romantadine is um, used for influenza A, and xenavir, ostomavir um, for influenza A and B. Metronidazole, tin, tindazole um, is used for many of the protozoa, clot, C. diff, um, colitis, ambiasis, trichomonas, uh, garden, guard, uh, bacterial vaginosis, um, and giardia. And finally, um, malaria is treated with chloroquine. So what are the uh, mechanisms of actions for the antivirals? If it's to be effective, an antiviral drug must enter an infected cell and act at the site of infection. Effective agents have a very narrow spectrum of activity, inhibiting, inhabiting replication but not killing the virus. 
they target a specific viral protein, usually an enzyme that's involved in the viral nucleic acid synthesis, and resistance may develop quickly. Um, but this is influenced by many factors. The difference between in vitro sensitivity testing and in vivo effectiveness is not clear, and the human patient must have a good immune system to recover from infection. Acyclovir is a synthetic purine nucleoside analog. Valcyclovir is a prodrug of acyclovir, and femcyclovir um, is a prodrug of pencyclovir. Both have similar mechanisms of action of acyclovir. They work by inhibiting the DNA synthesis. These drugs are activated by the enzyme thiamine kinase, which is found only in cells that are infected by the virus. They are relatively non-toxic to cells that are not infected um, to the virus. Activation of the antiviral first occurs in the infected cells and is followed by phosphorylation by the enzyme thiamine kinase, and finally acyclovir triphosphate. Um, the active derivative obtained from the monophosphate by the host cell enzymes inhibits the viral DNA polymerase, polymerase thereby blocking viral replication. Amantadine and romantadine are structurally similar tricyclic amines. They both inhibit an early step of viral replication, and they've been have an effect on the viral assembly. The locus of action is the influenza A virus M2 protein, which is an integral membrane protein. Zinavir and Ostolavir are thought to inhibit the virus neuraminidase. These this alters virus particle aggregation and release. For the antiprotozoals, um, metronidazole is considered a cytotoxic agent, but its exact mechanism of action is not really well understood. Uh, metronidazole damages DNA synthesis, resulting in cell death, and most probably metronidazole initially enters cells by passive diffusion and then is activated by an enzymatic system that is present only in certain cells, such as anaerobic cells and protozoa. A reaction then occurs and a nitrogen group is reduced. The metabolites are toxic substances that bind to DNA and RNA and interrupt the synthesis. And finally, the chloroquine, the exact mechanism of action is unknown. It um, raises the internal pH of the parasites and may also influence the hemoglobin digestion or interfere with parasitic nuclear protein synthesis. Again, you're not responsible for knowing these mechanisms of action, but it's um, good to have an idea of how these um, agents work. So let's talk about um, treatment principles for the herpes simplex treatment. Acyclovir, fancyclovirs, and valcyclovir are all useful in the treatment of the herpes viruses. They're used um, as treatment for acute infection as well as chronic suppression and reoccurrence. Systemic therapy for initial episodes does not prevent the establishment of latency or the development of future reoccurrences, even when given uh, high or prolonged dosages. Um, so for those patients, once they, re once they have um, the herpes simplex virus, um, they will always have it and can have reoccurrences. Oral acyclovir is the most useful and effective form of the drug for the treatment and um, for both herpes simplex virus as well as varicella infection. In patients with frequent recurrence, oral acyclovir has prevented or reduced the frequency or severity of recurrences in more than 95% of the patients. Topical acyclovir is significantly less effective but will shorten healing time and the duration of viral spreading as well as pain in patients with an initial outbreak of herpes. No clinical benefit has been found with the topical form given in recurrent episodes of the genital herpes. Topical acyclovir is effective against herpes. Um, genital herpes, it reduces the duration of the condition by about half a day. When prescribing these drugs, um, the practitioner must 
understand first um, the peak of viral activity and reproduction occurs prior to the appearance of any symptoms. Therefore, therefore, therapy is prescribed late in the disease process. Second, the viral agents work by inhibiting reproduction without um, removing latent viruses. Elimination of the virus is not complete, but these agents can assist in reducing and suppressing symptoms. The effectiveness of the drug depends on how early treatment is initiated. So again, um, we cannot eliminate the, the virus, um, but we can speed up the process and suppress um, symptoms. Almost all pers persons with, initi with initially symptomatic HSV2 infection have symptomatic reoccurrences. More than 35% of patients have frequent reoccurrences. Reoccurrence rates are especially high in persons with an extended first episode of infection, regardless of whether or not they received antiviral chemotherapy with acyclovir. Men with genital HSV2 infection have about 20% more reoccurrences than women do, a factor that may contribute to the higher rate of HSV2 transmission from men to women than from women to men and the continuing epidemic of genital herpes in the United States. These antiviral drugs are indicated for the treatment of general herpes in, um, for the following circumstances. Initial episode of general herpes, frequently reoccurring episodes, more than six per year, immunocompressed patients, compromised patients, I'm sorry, um, treatment for long-term suppression, and severe genital herpes. Antiviral should not be used in mildly affected patients because resistance to the medication can occur. Although resistance is rare, it's more likely to occur with prolonged or repeated therapy in severely immunocompromised patients. The use of acyclovir, valcyclovir, and famcyclovir in the non-pregnant and the pregnant women can significantly alter the disease and influence transmission rates, along with decreasing morbidity and mortality associated with HSV infection. The Three oral anti-herpes medications are equally effective. Um, however, acyclovir is significantly less expensive than the others. The acyclovir needs to be taken more often. Um, I believe it's four times a day ver versus um, the twice a day um, dosage of the other two. For herpes zoster treatment, antiviral drugs have been shown to enhance the healing of lesions and to decrease or stop pain frequently associated with the zoster lesions. Um, this includes paresthesias, dysthesias, hyperesthesias, um, particularly in, in the generally more severe cases of shingles that occur in patients 50 years of age or older. Treatment has been more successful when started within the first 48 hours of the onset of rash. For the anti-influenza drugs, many strains of the influenza A have developed resistance to the enantidine and romantidine. These drugs are not recommended for prophylaxis of seasonal influenza. Considerable concern has arisen about the possibility of the avian influenza pandemic, and preparation for the pandemic has produced many problems. Um, including stockpiling of the medication by the government, um, production problems, um, et cetera. New reports suggest the drug may not be very effective in reducing the influenza-related lower respiratory tract complications and has more adverse effects, such as nausea, um, than previously reported. Because Xenomer is inhaled, concern has been expressed about the effectiveness against systemic um, influenza. However, the studies have shown that 70 to 90 percent of um, effectiveness for prophylaxis before or after exposure with influenza A and B. Neuro um, inhibitors can decrease the severity and duration of symptoms in patients with influenza if treatment is started within 48 hours after the onset of illness. The earlier the treatment is started, the better the outcome. Um, there have been reported neuropsychiatric psych symptoms following the administration of these drugs, symptoms of delirium and abnormal 
um, behavior have um, prompted new warnings. However, uh, it's unclear whether it's related to the drugs or the disease itself. Um, for the antiprotozoal drugs, uh, again, metrodiazole has been uh, has both antibiotic as well as well as antiprotozoal actions. It's useful in a, a variety of infections. It's excellent against most gram-negative and gram-positive anaerobes, and is um, indicated for use in many serious infections. Because metronidazole reaches high concentrations in most body tissues, it's very successful in the treatment of intra-abdominal, intra-pelvic, cerebral infections, as well as endocarditis, bone and joint infections, as well as head and neck infections caused by susceptible anaerobes. Metronidazole has also reaches high concentrations in abscesses, uh, cerebral, hepatic, abdominal, and is often indicated in their treatment. It does not cover gram-positive cocci or anaerobic organisms, so it is usually used in combination with other drugs for the treatment of complicated um, infections. In primary care settings, um, metronidazole is, is usually the drug of choice for treatment in um, trichomonas vaginalis. Um, since this is a trans sexually transmitted disease, both partners need to be treated. Um, to prevent reinfection. The practitioner has the option of prescribing a one or seven day course. The single dose, two grams usually is effective as is the seven day course. Although some evidence has shown that the seven day treatment may have slightly higher cure rates, the one day treatment may be justified if the patient's compliance is um, a question. Metronidazole has also indicated for a treatment of bacterial or non-specific vaginitis. It's also the current treatment of choice for symptomatic intestinal infections caused by Giardia, Histolytica. Uh, both parasites are found worldwide and usually contracted by ingesting contaminated food or water. Um, sporadic outbreaks of Giardia occur throughout the United States and occasionally seen in the primary care settings. Metronidazole is also recommended as first-line treatment for C. diff colitis. Um, studies have shown that it's as effective, um, is effective in most cases. However, vancomycin remains a drug of choice for severe cases. Um, there has been some attention looking at um, metronidazole for treatments of patients with H. pylori. Uh, the organism involved in gastritis and peptic ulcer disease. When used in conjunction with bismuth, um, sometimes omeprazole or a histamine blocker, an antibiotic and a PPI appears to be effective in treating H. pylori. In addition, tetracycline may increase the length of remission. Finally, chloroquinolones are used in chemoprophylaxis of malaria. I'm sorry, chloroquine is used in chemoprophylaxis of malaria. Um, it's uh, effective for infections that are not resistant. Chloroquine is given weekly starting week one before travel, during travel, and continued for four weeks after leaving. It's also used in the treatment of malaria. So again, we need to look at patient variables of the geriatric patient. Medications are generally very effective and well tolerated. The antiherpes agents reduce, um, need to be reduced dosing in the elderly and those with decreased renal function. The elderly are more likely to have renal or CNS adverse events while taking these medications. Amantadine and renantadine um, need reduced dosage in patients older than age 65. Xenomere and ostomere, um, no dosing adjustment is necessary. For metronidazole, decreased dosing adjustment may be necessary due to their decreased renal function. In pediatrics, um, then cyclovir and valcyclovir safety and efficacy in children younger than 18 have not has not been established. Acyclovir, um, the safety and efficacy in children younger than two years has not has not been established as well. Amantadine and renantadine um, is not used for children younger than one year, and then a 
is not established for patients younger than seven years for treatment and five years um, for prophylaxis. Metronidazole um, has not been established except for the treatment of ambiasis in children and chloroquine. Um, children are especially sensitive to this drug. Fatalities following um, accidental ingestion of small doses and sudden deaths from parental um, chloroquine has been recorded. A single dose of five milligrams per kilogram in infants or children um, cannot be exceeded. Um, children and adolescents with influenza may have neuropsychiatric symptoms, which may be significant when using these, the antiviral medications for influenza. Pregnancy and lactation. Um, the acyclovir, fancyclovir, valcyclovir, and metronidazole are category B. However, metronidazole cannot be used during the first trimester. Uh, amantadine, romantadine, zinamomir, and chloroquine are category C. Acyclovir, amantadine, romantadine, metronidazole, chloroquine do appear in breast milk and is not recommended for the lactating um, breastfeeding women. Famcyclovir, valcyclovir, and zimavir, um, the safety of use in lactation is not known. For patient education, um, for the antivirals, anti-herpes agents, um, the patient should avoid sexual intercourse when invisible herpes lesions are present. That's when they are most um, contagious. Um, for the amantadine and romantadine, blurred vision or impaired mental acuity may occur. Um, patients are to use caution in performing tax, tasks that require acute vision or physical coordination. Thus, they shouldn't be driving or operating machinery. They need to avoid excessive alcohol use because it will exacerbate the CNS effects. Zinamir, um the patient needs to be instructed on the use of the delivery system. Um, and for the treatment of influenza, it has not been shown to reduce the risk of transmission to others. So these patients are still contagious. Um, the patients to stop the use of the drug if they experience any bronchospasms. For the antiprotozoals, uh, metronidazole um, may cause GI upset. Um, it should be taken with food, may cause darkening of urine or metallic taste. Um, they should avoid alcohol use. This results in severe nausea and vomiting. And avoid alcohol beverages or any products that contain alcohol because together they may cause severe nausea, vomiting, flushing, and or heart palpitations, um, similar to the disulfiram-like reaction. And finally, chloroquine may cause GI upset. This should be taken with food. Um, the patient should report visual disturbances or a difficulty in hearing, ringing in the ears, diarrhea, vomiting, muscle weakness, or rash. Uh, these medications should be kept out of reach of children. Overdosage is especially dangerous for children. Deaths have occurred. The medication can cause diarrhea, loss of appetite, nausea, stomach pain, or vomiting. The patient should be instructed to notify uh, the provider if effects are pronounced or bothersome.